Hi, this is Charlie from Tropical Birding and welcome to this video trip report for my latest Borneo birding tour called Broadbills and Bristleheads. On this video trip report, I'm going to be showing you some highlights from the tour, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, about the places we stay, about some of the local guides and other things that you should know about if you're thinking about coming on this trip in the future. First thing to say is that it's a, it's a two week trip. Um, it runs back to back with an extension, the Sarawak extension, which we've just started running recently that gets a few very difficult birds that you can't get in Sabah, some very special birds. Um, it also runs consecutively with another tour in Peninsula Malaysia. It's actually a separate tour, but they're timed that if you want to do this tour plus the extension plus the other tour, the Peninsula Malaysia tour, you can do them all. And that gives you about 26 days of birding, almost a full month in Malaysia. So we're picked up in Kota Kinabalu, which is where the tour starts, um, for the Sarawak extension as well. Um, and we're picked up by a local guide and a driver to take us into Sarawak by road. This is our local guy called Yeo, very good birder. For those that have arrived early, um, we'll be staying at the Hyatt Regency in uh, downtown Kota Kinabalu, really nice hotel. From there, we're going to be picked up and we're going to drive about four hours to the town of Lawas, which is just across the border into another state, um, to the state of Sarawak. There was no birding on the first day. And the next day, we're going to be setting off from Lawas and driving to the town of Bakilalan, which is near the border with Indonesia. We're going to be actually stopping at some secret spots on the way, one of which is for this bird. I didn't manage to get a very good picture of it, but here it is. It's a black bird with a red bill. It's a black oriole, quite a mega species, um, Bornean endemic and very difficult to see, but our local guide has it very well staked out. So we're going to take a look for this. And from there driving on to stay in the town of Bakilalan. It's just more a little village. It does have an airport, mainly birding a road to another town called Barrio, and it just passes through really, really nice forests with some really excellent species. This is where we stayed. Um, it's a homestay, um, very basic, and it has running water, but uh, no running hot water. Great food, basic bedrooms. They did actually boil these huge kettles for us and um so we could bathe with hot water they would give us each a, a big kettle and we would take it into the bathroom and mix it with cold water and kind of splash it over ourselves so it was uh yeah we did manage to to bathe with hot water but like i say it's a very um basic place we we were driving around in these four-wheel in these four-wheel drive trucks along these beautiful forest roads it was quite rainy when we were there, so quite muddy. And here's our local guide, Yeo, and we're following him along these forest roads. Really, really nice habitat and just fantastic birding. Really, really good birding. Just get, show you a few pictures of some of the things that we were seeing. We started seeing our first Bornean endemics. This is quite a common one, the yellow rumped or Bornean flowerpecker. This is quite a rare bird, sometimes seen in Sabah on the main tour, but not uh, not every time. It's quite a rare bird. It's called the Whitehead's Spider Hunter, and we saw it really well on the extension, but we did not see it on the main tour. This is another bird that can sometimes be seen on the main tour, the Mountain Serpent Eagle. But again, we did not see it on the main tour, so it gives you extra chances of some of the very difficult endemics. There are also a few birds, like the Black Oriole, that can't be seen in Sabah or the places that we visit. And this is called the Dullet Frogmouth. And these were actually building a nest. And the local guy just knows exactly where they are. He's probably the best person in the world to show you this bird. And there was another one called the Bornean Frogmouth as well. So yeah, quite a few birds that you only get on this tour. It was surprisingly good for butterflies as well. This, um, this map wing butterfly was very beautiful. This is a King Cobra, which slithered across the road in front of our vehicle. It's the longest venomous snake in the world. I mean, this was probably about 10 feet long. You know, it's really impressive snake. After our three nights at Bakilalan, we're going to be flying um, back, which is nice because it was quite a long drive. This is a 19-seater plane. You're only allowed 10 kilos of check-in luggage, but the, uh, the price per kilo 
for overweight luggage is 25 cents. <laughs> so, so, you know, even if it's 10 kilos over, it's like, you know, a couple of bucks. And there was one lady, she was one kilo over and they actually still asked her for the 25 cents. And on the way back, it's fascinating flying over these forested areas. Some of them are absolutely pristine. You hear a lot about um, deforestation, but there's still a lot of forest in Sarawak. Once we got back, um, I found this map, which actually had Bakelalan written on it with a little shining star, which I thought was quite funny because it's such a tiny little town and even had um, Barrio on there, which is where we were driving to. So we flew from Bakilalan back to Lawas. And then from there, we drove um, to a town called Beaufort. So we spent the night in this in the hotel in this town in Beaufort. And then the next day, oh, in the afternoon and the next morning, we visited the Clias Peat Swamp Forest. Peat Swamp Forest is a very fascinating habitat. It's not as diverse as lowland tropical rainforest, but it's got a few very unique birds. The Clias Reserve has got a, a very long boardwalk, which is a great way of accessing the forest because it's quite swampy, obviously. Because the soil is so soft, you get a lot of the trees are sort of leaning over like this at, a, at an angle. We saw quite a few cool birds. Um, this was a huge white-bellied woodpecker. And then this one was a very special bird for the reserve, one of the um, targets called a hook-billed bulbul. And unlike most bulbuls, which sort of are in the canopy eating berries and things, this is an understory insectivore. It sits there like a flycatcher. Um, really, really interesting bird, monotypic genus. As well as the birds, we also saw lots of these large flying foxes flying over the, uh, the forest, especially in the evening. From the Clias Reserve, we drove about two or three hours back to Kota Kinabalu, where we spent the night before the start of the main tour. And we also met people that hadn't come on the, the extension. Um, after such a basic extension, it was very nice to get back to our um, very fancy hotel rooms at the, at the Regency. Very nice hotel. This is a view from my uh, bedroom, um, looking over the, the bay, which is pretty spectacular, watching the sunset. The next morning, um, all of us were taken to the airport um, for our flight to the town of Lahad Datu. Um, and then w when we were getting on the, just before we were getting on the plane, we could actually see the huge Mount Kinabalu that we'll be visiting later on. This was a slightly larger plane that we got on um, for the flight to Lahad Datu. It's very short, it was uh, under an hour. So from Koto Kinabalu, we were flying to Lahad Datu medium-sized town on the eastern side of Sabah. And from there, we were picked up and taken a couple of hours along bad roads into the Danam Valley um, and the Borneo Rainforest Lodge, where we were spending three nights. This is our local guide that um, spent three days with us, called Ali. Uh, very good birder, really nice guy, a great company, a uh, good naturalist. These are the rooms at Borneo Rainforest Lodge. Very comfortable, air-conditioned, private bathrooms, quite luxurious. It had little espresso makers in the rooms and um, really good food. Uh, it's, a, it's a really well-done lodge. It's actually one of my favorite um, uh, eco-lodges in the world. Really, really cool place. So we started off on the first afternoon with a walk. We went up to the canopy walkway. They've had a canopy walk away for quite a while, but they've got a new section, which is quite impressive, which I hadn't been to before. And you see this tree in the distance over there. It was just full of fruit. Uh, so it was bringing just all sorts of stuff. It was great. This is a he headliner bird of the tour, the Bornean bristlehead. Really, really unusual bird. Uh, monotypic family. Uh, family listers um, often need this one. It's my third trip to Borneo on this trip and I hadn't seen it before so it was a lifer for me so it's a really it's not a guaranteed bird difficult bird but obviously a big target we were also lucky enough to get a, an adult male orangutan um, up from the canopy platform and he was just making um, making his bed for the night every night they make a new um, bed of leaves up in the trees in the fruiting tree up there we got spectacular views of this uh, rhinoceros hornbill and just an unbelievable amount of other birds, bulbuls and broadbills and flycatchers and leaf birds. And yeah, I mean, it was just fantastic. Our first broadbill, black and yellow broadbill, really comical kind of cartoon-like bird. 
and often, you know, when you're birding down below, you see it up in the trees through the scope. But yeah, we were getting this at eye level and close. Um, some canopy woodpeckers like this buff rumped woodpecker, other cool birds like this uh, raffles malcoa. And there was even a tree swift sitting on one of the cables, the whiskered tree swift. Of course, we were birding down below as well. Um, this is normally a very difficult bird to see, the great Argus, and they had one staked out. They had a male that was quite accustomed to people, so we kind of just walk up to it and even displayed a little bit, which is just incredible. It's really one of the, the wonders of the natural world. This is another one of the big targets um, for a time in Danham. This is Borneo, Christian, Fireback. Really, really beautiful bird. Sometimes you hear them drumming their wings like that. The males uh, do that. Um, you can hear them inside the forest, but we were lucky enough to have this bird crossing the, crossing the road and ruffling its feathers. It came to the show. Pitters are also a big um, target here. Not easy. We got this one. This, I actually photographed this myself on a previous occasion, but uh, we just had it uh, hopping across the trail once. Um, there's a lot of other cool birds, like this uh, striped wren babbler. A lot of good mammals in Danham as well. This is a red leaf monkey, a maroon langur, it's called as well. We did quite a few um, night walks as well. Um, our guide took us out around the staff headquarters. There's a football pitch there, a soccer field. And this um, buffy fish owl sits on top of the goalposts. You can also get another couple of frogmouth species. This is the goulds, and I think we also got blithe. Can sometimes also get large and sunder frogmouths. We did a little night drive one night, and the driver actually spotted this black crown pitter sleeping by the side of the road. So this is a quite a hard bird to see during the day, so that was quite cool to see it at night. From Danham, um, after three wonderful days there, we drove to a place called Sepilok, where we spent a couple of nights, and we birded the Rainforest Discovery Center. This is the place that we stayed, a nice wooden cabin. It's very comfortable. Mosquito net, so I didn't really see many mosquitoes in the rooms. Good food again, and like five minutes from the birding site. This is the Rainforest Discovery Center here. You do get bristleheads here sometimes, but uh, not guaranteed. We didn't see them this time, but we'd already seen them in Danham. Uh, you can get the Black Crown Pitter here as well. You access the canopy walkways by a series of towers with steps. This is the Bristlehead Tower, and it's just really impressive. There's some huge trees and these really big, sturdy metal walkways. They have a orangutan rehabilitation center nearby, but they also have a wild population of orangutans. It's sort of contiguous with a, a large patch of forest. This was a wild female that we saw, like at eye level. It was just fantastic. We actually got this one climbing up a vine, which was, uh, which was really cool. I mean, they're just so strong and agile. And uh, yeah, no fear of people. And they're kind of used to the tourists now. Quite a popular place to come here. Just having a little bite to eat. This is a giant squirrel, pale giant squirrel. I got a little bit of uh, slow motion footage. Just enormous. I mean, these things can get up to like one meter long. And again, normally you see them, you know, high up in the trees. But yeah, here we saw them at eye level. Really good birds as well. There was a, a Wallace's hawk eagle nest right at eye level um, on one of the canopy platforms. Really, really spectacular. And you can actually see the, the chick there, a little fluffy white chick. There was like a little hole in a tree filled with water quite close to one of the towers. And um, there was all these birds coming in and bathing in this little bath. This is a red-throated sunbird. Again, this is normally one you see in the scope, like way up at the top of the trees. So it was very cool to see this um, drinking and bathing here. We go there at uh, in the late afternoon again, and we hang around there until dark. You'll see this nest box up at the top. This actually has um, giant flying squirrels. In. And you'll see the, all these people on this um, bridge here, like about 100 people gathered. Um, you can also get another view from another oh, tower. Well, there's there. two of them in there. Tower. Got a bit of video two. of these flying squirrels coming out of yeah. the uh, box. There's actually two in this box here. Um, yeah, it finally kind of crawled out. You see the 
little black tip to the tail here. This is a red giant flying squirrel. And then finally, it just took off um, from here. And I'll just show you the picture here again. It flew over these people's heads. And everybody's like, whoo! <laughs> it was, it was incredible. It was such a show. And it was so cool that so many people saw it. But it's actually quite a popular thing. And this is actually the start of a night walk uh, that we took um, part in, which was just really fantastic. This is another thing we saw low down. Um, this is just off the ground. This is a horsefield tarsier or Bornean tarsier, um, a little prosimian primate. Another primate here, the Borneo or Philippine slow loris, which was really cool. You see a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool mammals. And this is also another uh, cool snake, the Bornean keeled pit viper. So um, yeah, it's just a just a great nature tour in general, uh, as well as the cool birds. We also got a sleeping bird. This is a rufous backed dwarf kingfisher. Showing its beautiful colors. A lot of cool trees in there as well. This one, we were told, uh, looks like an elephant. I guess you can see that. A lot of good woodpeckers as well. This is a crimson winged woodpecker. From Sepilok, we went on to Sandakan, where we were going to get on a boat. Along the drive, we saw a lot of these uh, oil palm plantations. A lot of forests have been cut down in Borneo to make room for these. So if you ever buy anything that has palm oil in, this is where it comes from. It leads to habitat destruction in these rainforests. So yeah, shop with care. So we got to Sandakan. And from there, we got on a boat um, across the bay, like a speedboat, and then up um, a river channel and to a place called Sukau Rainforest Lodge. So from Sandakan, we ended up at the Cow Rainforest Lodge here. We got on this kind of boat here. Very popular thing to do, a lot of, uh, lot of tourists. And then we finally end up at the jetty at the Cow Rainforest Lodge. This is the lodge itself, right on the edge of the water. This is where we eat all our meals, three meals a day, very good food. Very well organized place, a lot of people. I mean, there was probably a couple of hundred people staying here, but it just, it just run very well. This is our local guide, um, and also on the left, our boatman. And I, I've met a lot of boatmen, and this guy was seriously one of the best. His um, maneuvering the boat and getting you in position to see stuff, I mean, it was really, truly impressive. Two or three or sometimes four times a day, we would get in these smaller boats and, uh, and head out for two or three hours at a time, exploring the Kinabatangan River, um, which is just a very cool way to see it. Of course, we all put our life jackets on. Um, there are little houses and villages along the way, people growing oil palms again. Um, this little building here is um, a place where edible nest swiftlets, uh, white nest swiftlets can come in and make nests. And after they've bred, they, they harvest these nests and they sell them. It's quite big, uh, big business. So you're seeing a lot of these little uh, swift farms. One of the big targets there, especially for the non-birders, is the proboscis monkey. This is a big male with a big nose and a big fat belly. The females seem to love it. A female with a smaller nose and some very cute little um, babies. But yeah, uh, very, very cool to watch the proboscis monkeys. This is a silvered langur, uh, another one of the primates from there. There's um, quite a lot of primate species there. This is called the Sunda Kolugo, which we were lucky to see at night and during the day. Um, sometimes called a flying lemur, actually glides from tree to tree. There's another cool thing we saw that was a rock overhang with some other um, swiftlets. These were plume toad swiftlets. Got a little bit of video of them coming in and out. These nests are just made with sort of mud and moss and things and they're of no value at all. The edible nest swiftlets are made with uh, saliva, which they put in the bird's nest. The Kinabatangan is fantastic for hornbills. I think we saw six species here. This is the oriental pied, black hornbill, wrinkled hornbill. Um, this is quite a rare one called the white crowned hornbill, which we got really good views of. Other big targets along here, the endangered storm stalk. And also good for raptors. This is a lesser fish eagle. Just at dusk as well, you sometimes get bat hawks coming out, uh, which is a really uh, very cool bird. There is a um, big cave nearby called Gomontang Cave. 
and with millions of bats coming out. And you also see all the different swiftlets, the white, white nest, black nest, um, mossy nest swiftlets. Um, but unfortunately, that's closed for refurbishment. By next year, by 2024, it should be open again. So on future tours, we should be able to go there. And often at dusk, you see bat hawks flying around there. Sometimes we try and get on the little tributaries, the smaller channels. A little video I took of going along a lot more, um, a lot quieter, a lot better for, for seeing small birds. Very good for kingfishers. Sometimes you see these blue-eared kingfishers. This is a stalk bill kingfisher with a huge bill. Very cool bird. Sometimes these black and red broadbills also nest by the side of the water. From Sukau, we cross the river and then we drive all the way to the town of Kundasang, where we were based to visit the Kinabalu Park and Mount Kinabalu with Montane Forest. This is our guide for this section of the trip. He's called Adrian. He was a, a real character. Um, Chinese-Malaysian guy, really big into food, really knows his plants, great sense of humor, musician, just a really, really fascinating guy. So I really enjoyed his company. This is Kinabalu itself, Mount Kinabalu, the tallest mountain in Southeast Asia, I think. Uh, you need special permits to climb up there now. This is a place in Kundasang that we were based, the Zen Garden Resort. There was even some endemics in the garden. This is the pygmy white eye born in endemic. And the food there was very good. It was sort of uh, family style, kind of Chinese style, sort of vegetables, meat dishes, rice, soup. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite tasty. In the town of Kundasang as well, sometimes on the, uh, on the way or on the way back from the park, we would stop at the market to try some fruits. These were rambutans, which are very yummy. And also durian. We got to try durian. I don't know if you heard of this. Very smelly fruit. I call it the king of fruits. Um, often uh, buses, any kind of public area, any hotels, they always have signs saying no durian. Really pungent fruit that, and the, the smell kind of lingers. From Kundasang, we went into the park. This is the upper section of Mount Kinabalu. Lower down, you can see it's cloaked with this beautiful montane rainforest. Rain's quite a bit up there, often quite misty. Um, looks very kind of eerie. But yeah, when the sun comes out, it's nice and bright and uh, yeah, a lot better conditions for bird watching. This is our group and our guide um, looking for some forest birds. I think we were looking for the Whitehead's Trogon at this point. A lot of endemics here. A lot of it is quite easy birding. This was a chestnut hooded laughing thrush, which is very common. Indigo flycatcher, the mountain black eye, another Bornean endemic, Bornean whistler, uh, mountain wren babbler, golden nape. Barbet's a really beautiful one. Fascinating insect as well. This is a Raja Brooks birdwing. Very valuable and rare butterfly. Just stunning. And plants as well are very interesting. A lot of pitcher plants there. After Kinabalu, we went to our last side of the trip, which was uh, Tambunan, which is a little bit lower down and a few different species. On the way, we stopped for lunch um, in a food court. This is a real cultural experience. This is very, very Malaysian food courts. But we came in here and there's just little stalls all the way around the edge and you, we, we just kind of went around and chose uh, whatever looked good. In Tambunan, um, we birded the Rafflesia Information Center area. It was really good. And um, we got a few birds which we didn't see at Kinabalu, like this Bornean leaf bird, Bornean bulbul. And uh, the local guide, uh, Adrian, they also knew of a nest hole of the mountain barbet which was really cool. I think it's going to come out any second. Here it comes. I got a little bit of slow motion footage. This, I think it was maybe feeding chicks inside. It's going to fly off any second, I think. There it goes. Ooh. Obviously, the Rafflesia Information Center, they give you information on Rafflesia flowers, uh, some of the biggest flowers in the world. It's really nice. They, they have all these different areas which are numbered in different plots, and they go, they're constantly walking around trying to find Rafflesia flowers, because these things flower for like a week and then they die and then they're gone. And you go in here and they tell you how old the flowers are and how difficult the walking is and how big they are. So as they only last a week, this was on its sixth day and it was not looking too good anymore. So we decided not to go for that one. The current one that was looking nice was this one here, which was quite a steep 
hike up, which not everybody in the group could manage. So only about half the people in the group went. Um, obviously, you can't guarantee that you're going to see one of these flowers, but some of the people in the group were very, very keen to see it. I had actually never, even though I spent quite a bit of time in Borneo, had never seen a Rafflesia flower. So yeah, involved sort of using a rope to pull ourselves up this steep slope. This is like about a foot wide, and it's actually one of the smaller ones. This is Rafflesia pricey. But some of them can be, you know, almost up to a meter wide. And this is me with my Lifa Rafflesia. Um, and this was actually the end of the trip. So yeah, it was a very nice way to end. If you want to know more about the trip, check out uh, tropicalbirding.com, Raw Bills and Bristleheads Tour. Got some information. It's got lots of nice photos. Got the price there, the uh, length of the tour, which is two weeks, um, plus an extra, I think, six days for the extension. It has a moderate pace. It says moderate difficult. It's quite a lot of walking on it. We were clocking up quite a few miles every day, and it was tiring. There is some walking on trails as well, which can be steep and a little bit slippery. So yeah, you need a a decent degree of fitness to join this tour. Just a quick recap of the trip. The extension um, had a three-night homestay, which is very basic, and a couple of one-night stops. Um, the main tour in Sabah is really nice, actually, because you get a lot of these multiple night stops, um, very few one-night stops. There's three locations which have three night stops, and one that has an, uh, two nights. Yeah, So you're not constantly unpacking and repacking, and you really... Uh, often like right there, um, very close to the habitat. So that was pretty cool. There is a link to the EBA trip report here, which you can check out. And there's also some observations of iNaturalist, which you can click on and check out. Um, I've also got a mammal list here. Very good tour for mammals. I think we have 36. Sometimes you can get up to 40 mammal species, which for Asia is pretty special. And just to finish, here is my eBird trip report. You can see I've got uh, 290 species photographed over half. So even though it's a birding trip, there's, a, there's good chances for photography, especially on the boat uh, at Sakao. It's really nice for photography. And uh, also at the Canopy Tower at Danum. Very nice. But yeah, fantastic trip. Really one of my favorites. It's a great natural history trip, a lot other than birds. Yeah, just a lot of cool stuff. Really high quality birds. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video trip report. Um, if you're thinking about coming on it, hope to see you in the future. Thanks for watching and take care.